How do I play Reefscape? You may have already seen the game animation, but this video is going to take you through each of the different elements of the Reefscape game and how Animark thinks you might be able to approach them in your coming season, and how those will affect your robot design. The Reefscape field is divided into two sections, each with three driver stations and individual alliance field elements. The field is bisected by the barge, which also includes cages, which your robot will be hanging from the end of the match. On each side of the field, there is a reef central to each half that is alliance specific. Closer to the barge, there's also a processor where algae can be scored. And right next to the driver stations, there are two coral stations where coral is deployed onto the field. The barge is primarily constructed out of truss and spans the width of the field. Above the barge, there are two nets where either robots or human players can score algae. And below the nets are three cages each per alliance. Cages can be swapped out. There are two different versions of cages, shallow cages and deep cages. The shallow cages are much higher and closer to the truss assembly, while deep cages are a bit of a pendulum and swing on a chain connected to the truss above them. When hit, both cages will sort of swing and rotate underneath the truss. The shallow cage will really rotate sort of around just its top part, while the deep cage will swing kind of like a pendulum. When trying to climb on either of these two cages, you'll want to make sure that you have a firm grip of that cage, because they will swing even after you've completely stopped contacting with it. The deep cage ends up much closer to the floor when it rests. It's about three inches off the field carpet, while the shallow cage is a little bit over two feet above the field carpet. It's a lot easier to get underneath and just climb up on. Both types of cages may affect how you want to design your robot. Being able to quickly travel underneath a shallow cage may require a short robot, while designing your robot around the deep cage and learning how to climb it uh, may also be an important consideration for the design of your entire robot. You can pass through between each of the cages. They're about three feet apart from each other. The reef has 12 scoring pipes, each with three branches on them, as well as a trough directly below the branches where coral can be scored. Notably, algae also begins on the reef in between some of the branches, and you'll have to remove it for your coral to score on those branches. If your coral is touching an algae while scored on the reef, it does not count for points. So you need to remove algae from the reef if you intend to score on level three or some portions of level two. The reef is a particularly interesting challenge because there are three different angles at which you should be scoring onto either branches or the trough. L4 and L1 are a completely different scoring orientations to L2 and L3. So your mechanism will have to be adaptable to each of these different locations, or you'll have to have multiple mechanisms. The reef does get quite high with the top branch of L4 being about six feet off the carpet. The height variation is a particularly difficult challenge for FRC teams to face when they're approaching the reef. A part of the challenge this year is that your robot must start less than three foot and six inches tall, though the reef does go up to six feet tall. You can expand in height as much as you want as long as you don't start at that height. There are many different design solutions you could make to create a device that reaches all four of the levels on the reef. We generally recommend an elevator for this since it's mostly just a straight up task. All but three coral in this game are stored inside the coral stations where human players can enter them into the field at any time in the match. That includes autonomous. The coral station has a slope of 55 degrees, which matches the slope of 35 degrees on the reef. Theoretically, all you would have to do to score a coral is intake it from the coral station and simply drop it off at the reef at the same angle it came in at. Coral can be placed into the coral station in one of two orientations, either horizontal or vertical. So whatever is better for your robot, you can choose to enter it in that manner. Because almost all of the coral comes from the coral station, you may want to consider not even having a floor intake for coral. Simply picking up from the feeder station is where they're mostly going to come from. Conversely, you might find that having the human player simply throw them onto the ground and the robot picking them up with the floor intake is faster for your particular design. Once algae is removed from the reef or picked up from the three set positions where they start on the field, you can score them in the processor. The processor is a low goal affixed inside the field perimeter on the right side of your alliance. When you score algae into the processor, it goes to the opponent's human player, who can then pick up the algae from the processor and throw it into the net above the barge. This means that scoring in the processor typically means that both alliances are going to get some points on the interaction. But keep in mind, it does get much harder to throw algae into the net the more algae already scored in the net. So as you score algae, you may find you're getting a higher differential of points compared to your opponent alliance. Remember, algae can be scored in both the processor or the net by the robot. If you want to completely bypass the processor and avoid giving your opponents a shot at throwing it into their net, 
you can just shoot directly into the net. This is, however, fewer points than scoring it in the processor. This year, there are 22 April tags littered throughout the field on various structures. These are fiducial markers intended for your robot to be able to track and understand its own orientation in comparison to them. By looking at the difference between the white and black boxes on the April tag itself, the robot can get pretty great 3D positional data directly from just looking at a April tag with a camera. April tags were strategically placed around the field for your robot to have a good shot at seeing an April tag no matter what task it was doing at the time. When you think about your robot design and control system strategy, remember that the driver stations are not all in the exact same place on the field. You may have different views from each driver station of the reef, the cages, the processor, all those things. Driver station three has a particularly bad view of the cages, so keep that in mind when you develop your robot. The reef itself will also obstruct some of its own scoring locations. The backside of the reef may be particularly difficult to score on if you don't have any automated systems in your robot for scoring. In the first 15 seconds of the match, robots are completely autonomous. They can do most of the tasks that you do in the teleoperated mode, but some of them have bonuses applied for doing them autonomously. Scoring on the reef has different bonuses for different branches. Different branches will get you one bonus point for scoring in an autonomous, while scoring on branches L3 and L4 will get you two bonus points for scoring on those branches in autonomous. You can also score in the processor, though there's no bonus associated with that, and you can score in the net, though there's no bonus associated with that. You also get points for moving off the starting line. This year's autonomous challenge is particularly difficult. There's not any great hard locations where you can place your robot to set up for autonomous, and because you're going to the feeder stations to collect additional coral during autonomous, you may be crossing paths with your alliance partners. After autonomous, drivers take control for teleoperated mode. You'll be doing the same tasks you did in Autonomous, scoring coral in the reef and algae in the processor. Now keep in mind that there are a lot more coral available in the coral station than there are algae on the entire field. So even if you grab algae from your opposing alliances section of the field, you will not be scoring as many algae. This year, one robot is allowed to cross over to the opponent's side of the field and is allowed to extend however they wish, do whatever they would uh, on their own side of the field, just on the opponent's side of the field. So make sure that only one robot at a time is in that opposing section defined by the edge of the barge zone. But make sure never to enter the opponent's barge zone. There are lots of fouls here. You want to make sure that you're not causing any fouls, free RP, anything like that. So just keep out of the opponent's barge zone and especially do not contact any of their cages. Notice there's no protected zone around the coral station. So this defender can defend you while feeding from the coral station, but there is a protected zone around the reef and the barge. Additionally, the processor does not have a protected zone either. You could just sit there and completely block scoring in a processor. Like I mentioned, there are two types of cages available to you for the end game, the shallow cage and the deep cage. You do have to tell the field staff which combination of cages you would like to place before the match, and they will make sure that the correct cages are set out on the barge for your end game task. The shallow cage is technically easier uh, because it is significantly far off the ground and all you have to do is get your robot off the ground to score. Because it is above you, you can simply reach up and pull up and be above the ground. Note, however, that the cage will swing when you do this and just pulling up may not be quite enough to be completely off the ground once the cage has swung. The same is true of the deep cage. You should be very careful about modeling the physics here with the deep cage. The cages are made of steel and they weigh about 18 pounds. So you should additionally be careful that if a cage hits you while swinging, it could do some damage to your robot. In Reefscape, there are nine available ranking points in a given match. This is an increase over the six previously available. Both alliances can get a ranking point for scoring five coral pieces on each of the four levels of their reef. Alliances can also score a ranking point by scoring one coral on the reef on Autonomous and having all robots move off the starting line during Autonomous. There's also a ranking point for scoring 14 points on the cages during endgame. A deep cage is worth 12 points, a shallow cage is worth 6, and parking in the barge zone is worth 2 points. For a total of 14, that gets you a barge zone ranking point. Additionally, winning will get you 3 ranking points, and a tie will get you 1. If you score 2 algae in the processor during the match, the coral RP will change in difficulty. Instead of having to get 5 coral on 4 levels of the reef, you'll go down to 5 coral on 3 levels of the reef. Teams should seek to maximize the number of ranking points they're earning per match to influence their ranking score and ultimately their qualification ranking during the event. A lot of this year's game is a packaging challenge. There are a lot of different tasks your robot needs to do that may require different mechanisms. Trying to 
mix and match mechanisms to make sure your robot's capable of playing all the elements of the game you want to play is a very difficult challenge for FRC teams to accomplish. This game, more than many games, will require you to make design choices to decide what you want your robot to do at the events. Make sure to plan carefully, understand how much time you have and how many resources are available to you when you pick your design strategy. Don't overextend yourself and ultimately end up with a robot that does nothing. Pick a couple of these challenges, focus on those, and build a robot that's successful at the scale of play that you intend to. Reefscape is a pretty challenging game, and we here at Animark are really excited to see how teams tackle the specific challenges inside the game. And that's how you play Reefscape.